So now we're on to the fourth project and that's this exercise tracker right here. And to get started with this, just open the repository link on GitHub and just click code here and then copy this. And in Glitch, just click new project, import from GitHub and just paste it into here and then press okay. And it will start generating it in the background. Now, this one is quite difficult in my opinion. So what you do here is you give a username like, um, like that and then if you when you click submit you get this user ID back and then what you can do is you can copy this user ID and you can paste it into here and then you can give some details of some exercises where you give a description the number of minutes and then optionally a date and then when you click submit it gets added to your exercise log and then what you can do is you can go to slash API slash exercise slash users and that will give you the full list of users and there's some like uh, very very um, interesting names in this yeah like here um, another thing you can do is you can go to a uh, log here and then put a user ID in like this and when you paste your user ID like this you can get your own exercise log and you can also add filters to this in the URL so what I'm just going to do here is just change this to something like FCC exercise, just so it makes a bit more sense. And I'm just going to give it a description. And what I'm also going to do is in the server.js, there's a bunch of code that we can just get rid of right here. So this um, app do use body pass, so just get rid of that. Um, and then go from this not found middleware all the way down to this listener and just remove that as well because we just want to make it as simple as possible. So um, the way you would share your link for this is you just click live app here and then click copy and then just paste this into the address bar. And what you can do then is just submit this link right here and just paste it into here and then click I've completed and that's how you submit your projects here. So now that we have a project running, we are ready to get started. So if you look here, you can see that the app hasn't connected yet. And that's because we have to make a few changes to the database because um, firstly, we can't connect to this um, URL right now because we don't have a database setup. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. Um, I'm not going to show you the MongoDB setup because that's in the uh, introduction video. But what we can do, see once I remove that line, you can see it started loading. Um, so what we can do here is first thing we need to do is if you look at package.json, MongoDB and Mo Mongoose are heavily out of date. So we need to update them. So just look at NPM pages um, for Mongoose and MongoDB. And you want to make sure that you fetch the latest version. So what I'm going to do right now is just copy this uh, version number in here and go to this Mongoose entry and then paste it into here. And then what I'm going to do is do the same thing for MongoDB because the reason I'm doing it is because, is because it fails to connect to the database because I guess the methods that we're using is not compatible with these versions. I feel like they should have updated this for us, but it, we have to do it manually. So save those and then just open up um, the terminal and I'm just going to open this up in a new page just so that we can see everything. Um, Another thing you want to do is in your environment variables, you want to put your database password and then store it like this in this format with this PW right here. And in Glitch Console, once you've added the entries to package.json, you want to make sure you run npm install here. And what this will do is it'll fetch and install the newer versions of your packages. Okay, so that should have installed um, these versions right now. So the next thing to do is to get the URI. So to do that, click connect here and click connect your application and just copy this link right here. And what you want to do is go down to this and then just make a variable like URI, for example, and then just paste this in right here. And we have the username filled in right here. What you want to do for the password is you want to put into here process.env.pw or whatever environment variable you stored your password as. So we have that now. Next thing we need to do is fill in the uh, database name. And in my case, it's just db1. Again, if you look at the introduction to the MongoDB video, you'll see how we made that. But if we go into collections here, we can see that the database name is indeed uh, db1. So we have the URI written out now. So next thing to do is um, connect 
to this database. And the way you can do that is we will have to use a new connection method. So if you just look at, um, go to the free code camp page and just go down to the, um, here, install and set up mongoose and just copy this method right here. This is what we can use to connect to our database. So underneath this, just put this here and then just change your URI to the URI right here. Save that um, and then go to the logs and clear this and just make some minor change so that it uh, uh, reruns everything and make sure there's no errors flagging up here. And if there's no errors, um, you should be good to go and we should be connected to our database now. So the first thing to do is think about how we're going to be storing our data. So we need to store data for users as well as these exercises. And since each of these exercises belongs to one of these users, what we can do is put them inside the user document itself and we don't have to create a separate collection for these. So let's define some schemas for this. So the first one I'm going to do is define a schema for these exercise sessions, I guess. So I'm just going to call this let um, exercise session schema. And what I'm going to do is call the new mongoose.schema method. If you watch the video for creating schemas and models, this will um, be a lot clearer. And let's think about what we have to save here. So the user ID we don't have to save because we're going to be putting this inside a user document. We have to save a description and a description has a star here, which means it's required. So let's do that first. So we want to do description and we want the type to be a string and we want required to be true. Let's think about what we want next. So we have this duration here and it's a number of minutes and this is a number and it's required. So we want duration and this is going to be a type of number. And again, we want required to be true. Finally, we have this um, date and it's it's given right here in the year, year, month, month, date, date format. And this is an ISO string. So it's good. I'm going to just store the date as a string, but you can store it as a date, but I just want to keep it simple. So I'm just going to put date and then string. And since date is not required, we can just leave it like this. Now let's think about storing users. So what we have in our user is all we need is a username and an array to store their log of exercise sessions. And the user ID, we don't have to worry about it because MongoD and Mongoose will create that for us and we can just use the object ID. So we want to say let user schema equals, and then once again, it's new mongoose.schema. And what we want to do here is put a username and that's going to be a required string again because we can't create users without providing a username. Although we don't really need it because since we're using the user ID, but I'm just going to create it anyway. Um, and also what we want to do is have a log here and the log is going to be an array of these exercise sessions. And the way we can do that is if we just put exercise session uh, schema here, this will automatically tell MongoDB to expect a bunch of exercise session models or documents inside this. So we've basically just set it to be um, that kind of array. The final thing we need to do is create some models for this. So I'm just going to call this let um, exercise session equals and then once again call the mongoose.model method. Oops. And we want the um, exercise session model to be called. I'm just going to call it session and we want uh, it to be using the exercise session schema. We won't be using this model that much, so it doesn't really matter what we name it. The more important model is the user, so I'm just going to call this user. Um, actually, I'm going to change this to capital session as well. And once again, it's going to be um, mongoose.model here. And the name we want to give it is user. And we want to, to use the user schema that we just created. And um, I'm just going to double check my notes, but that should be everything we need to s create the models. So now we can start create like creating documents from these models and then saving them to our database. So now that we've got our models ready, let's look at fulfilling these tests. And 
as you can see, the first test automatically passes and all it makes sure you do is that you're not cheating and you're not just giving the um, example URL. And the only case that this um, URL would, this test would fail is when you, like I said, give it the example URL. So as long as you create another glitch project and then give it that URL, test one should pass. So that one is very, very easy. So let's look at doing test two now. And what it says is that when we post form data to the API exercise new user route, um, we'll get returned with a username and the ID, right, like this. So if in here, if I just put user and then just put number and I click submit, it gets saved to the database and I get the username in this username field and the ID of the saved object in this ID field. So that's what we need to do. And if you look here and if you look at the... Um, index.html, we can see that we have a form here for creating a new user and the action points to this root right here and the method is post. So we need to create a post um, root for this um, path right here. So what we want to do is say app.post and um, the path that we want to do that for is um, you can we can just copy it from this index.html and it also tells you that in the main page. So we can just paste that in here. And then we wanna do is, we wanna use um, body passes URL encoded function so that we can um, capture the data from this form right here. So if we just Google um, body parser NPM um, and you go to the NPM page, the method that we need to use is right here. It's just this one right here. So you just wanna copy this and um, give it as a middleware function in for this root as a second argument. And then as a final argument, we want to create our own middleware function that takes in a request and a response. And since we are uh, returning a JSON object here, um, what we can do for now is we can just return a blank object just to start off with. And what I'm just going to do here is if I just do console.log request.body like this and save that. So if I put in a username like user1, actually let's go with Alice, um, and I click submit, we get the empty object returned and that's fine. But if we look at the um, log here, we can see that we have in our request body, we have a field called username and we ha have the value right here. So what this body parser function has done is from this form, it's looked at this input with the ID, with the name of username and it's created a field called username in our request body. And it's just got the value from that input and then put it in here. So we now have the input from the form. So let's think about what we want to do. We want to um, create we want to create a user model from that username and then put it into a collection called users, I guess. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say let new user equals, and then we can use the uh, constructor on this user model right here. So we can say let new user equals new user. And inside it, we want to give an object with the properties that we want to set. We want to set the username field right here and we want to set that to the request dot body dot and then you can see it's in the username field right here. We don't have to worry about the log for now and um, we can just set the username field right here. And then what we want to do is attempt to save this to the database. So you say new user dot save like this and inside it you give a callback function of what you want to do and it takes in an error and data and the data in this case I guess is a saved user and what we can do is, if there wasn't an error, so if this was successful, um, we can JSON this back. So we can say re response.json. And actually, you know what? I'm going to create a response object here. So I'm going to say let a response object. And let's think about, so I'm going to set this to an empty um, object for now. And we want to set the, uh, oh my god. Uh, we want to set this uh, username field to the username and we want to set the underscore ID field to the ID. So we can say response object a username like this and we can set this to the saved users username field because this will be taken from the um, from the collection. 
Then we, what we want to do is set the ID field. So we're going to say response object and then set the ID field. And um, what we can do here is get this from the saved user again. So MongoDB will save the ID in a field called ID. So we can just say ID. Finally, we want to do response.json and then we want to return this response object back, which has the fields filled in. So if I remove this now and save that, so let's let's try this so i want to go here and then click submit on alice and as you can see we have username alice and then we have id oops i need to make a small change here and then i need to set the id like this um and then if i submit that again yeah we can see that we have an underscore id field with the id returned and if i go into mongodb and i refresh this um Mongoose automatically cre created a plural version of our model, which is called users. And we can see that we have these two Alice entries here. So I'm just going to delete um, whichever one we got back here. The other one, I'm just going to delete it out. So that ends in D7. So I want to delete this one. Yeah, just so that we don't have a duplicate. And I'm just going to, yeah, that's fine. So what this did is um, it it created a new user object and it set the username field to the username field from the request body, the body path added from the form. Then it attempts to save it. And if there was no error, what it does is it creates a response object. It sets the username field to that username. It sets the ID field to that ID, both of this which it obtained from here. And then what it did was it JSON that back to the um, user. So now we can create start creating new users into our database so that's everything really for um the test one so you can just go ahead and paste it in and then click i've completed and if we scroll down we can see the test one is now complete so let's take a look at test three now and what it says is that i can get an array of all users by putting in this slash api slash exercise slash users so if we go into here and then we go to slash API slash exercise slash users, um, what we should get back is an array with all the users that have been created with some uh, questionable usernames. So that's all we need to do here. So to start off with, I'm just going to create another use, some more users here, just um, just so we can test that we get the array back. So I'm going to create Bob, um, Charlie, and I'm also going to create a Diana. So if we submit that and we go ahead and refresh this, we should see that we have at least um, four users in our collection. Okay, cool. So first we want, thing we wanna do is set up a get root for this path right here. So just copy that. And what we wanna do is create a new get root. So app.get and the path is this right here. And um, we just need to provide our own middleware function here that takes in a request and a response. And we don't need to take anything from the request this time. So let's think about uh, what we want to return. So first thing we want to do is we want to find all of these users. So we want to just get all of these documents back and then just return them as a JSON because they are already in the correct format with the ID and um, the username. So first thing we want to do is call the find method on the um, user model. And in the find method, the first argument you give it is an object with the selection criteria. And if we just give an empty object here, what it means is there's no selection criteria. So all of these documents will pass and we'll get an array containing all of these documents. Next argument is the callback function, which takes in an error and data. And the data this time, I guess, is an array of users. And if there was no error here, what we can do is call the JSON method on the response. So response.json. Uh, and we can just literally give it this array of users. And it's already in the correct format for us. So if I save this and I go into here and then click um, slash API slash exercise slash users and press enter we can see that we have the id of users and it's basically the same thing here so we have the underscore id you have the username and you have the version and that's exactly the same thing that we have right here and the logs are empty but that's not really relevant we just need the exercises back so that should be a test three completed so if you submit that now yeah we can see that test three is now completed 
So now we look at tackling test four, and this is about adding exercises. So if I take one of these user IDs right here, I'll take the one for Juan here, and um, I paste it into here, and then give a description of an activity like tennis, and then I put a duration in for a number of minutes, and I just leave the date for now. And if you click submit, we get this object back with the ID, the username, the date, the duration and the description and what this will have done is added it to the database for Juan so if I go into slash um, actually I don't think it shows the log in this so it's not really we can't really view it here but if I do something like slash uh, log and then put question mark user ID equals and then put Juan's uh, user okay that's not working but we'll come back to that so anyway all we need to do is add users to this so we're going to fill in this form and then click submit. So the first thing we want to do is create a post route for this form and it's on slash API slash exercise slash add. So we can copy that here. Um, another way to ver verify this is if you look at the func the form, the fun uh, the uh, action is the same route. So in server.js, just create a new route here and it's app.post and the path is the um, API exercise add thing. Um, okay, my bad. There we go. Um, we need to use body parser again to capture the inputs. So once again, we want to use the um, URL encoded function from here that we did for the new user. And that will populate our request body with the fields from the form. And finally, uh, we want to create our own callback, our own middleware function that takes in a request and a response. And what I'm gonna just do for now is return an empty object, just so it doesn't crash. And we're just gonna have a look at the um, request body. So if I save that and I open up the logs and I clear this, and I put in a user ID, so um, what I'm just gonna do is copy one of the user IDs from here. So just that one. and. I put in a description, so let's say cricket, and duration 23 minutes, and I put 2020-06-21, and then click submit. We get a blank object here, and that's okay. Um, and if we look at the log here, we can see that body parser has captured um, all of these names right here, created a field for them, and then put the values in here for us. So the next thing we want to do is create um, an exercise um, session instance or an exercise session documents from this data. So what we can do is say, we can say let new session and we want it to be a new session right here. And then I'm just using the constructor from this model and inside it, we want to give an object and let's set the properties. So the first property we need to set is um, the description. So I'm going to say description, and th this is just going to be the request dot body dot description field. Next thing we want to set is the duration. So duration, and this we can obtain from this duration field. But this is in the form of a string, and we need it in our schema to be in the form of a number. So what I'm going to do is call the pass int method, which is a vanilla JavaScript method. And I can just give it the string that we want, and it will convert it into a number for us, or an integer for us. So we want to do a duration here. Next field that we need to set is the um, date field. So we can say date. And it's fine to take in this date as a string, since we're storing it as a string. So we can just do request.body.date here. Okay, so now we have a new session, but there's also one small thing it says here that it says if no date is supplied, it will use the current date. So we need to make sure that we set the current date as well. And if we look at, um, I'm not sure what the method is. Um, I think it's to this, um, hang on, let me just find it. Yeah, it's this method called dates, dot to ISO string and what this does is um, it returns the date 
in an ISO string format. So we'll get it like this year, year, month, month, day, day thing. And it also adds a time here, but we can just sub substring it to do that. So to create a new um, date for our current time, we can say something like if date, um, sorry, if a new session dot date. And if that's equal to an empty string, that means that we didn't take in a date here since it's an empty string. What we can do is set this field so we can say new session dot date equals, and then we can say new date here. So this creates a new date object with the current um, date and time. And then we can call the dot uh, to ISO string method, and that will convert it into an ISO string for us. And then what we also need to do is um, we have to substring it. So what substring does is it cuts the string to the first um, certain number of characters. Oops. So um, so we can call it dot substring method. And I think the correct number is from 0 to 10. So what this does is it makes sure that we get like the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it gets the first 10 characters from the date. So and then we can get rid of this time and we just have this date as a string. So this is a vanilla JavaScript string method. So what this has done now is created a new session um, document with the description, duration and date from the uh, form. And if there was no date, we've just created a new date and then called the ISO string method to convert it into the correct format. And then we just chopped off this um, time part right here, which we don't need. So we've got all our fields now. So the next thing to do is we want to add um, this to our user and we have remember we also have the user id taken in from the request body so what we want to do is on the user model we want to call the find by id and update method like this and the first argument for this oops the first argument for this is a selection criteria and we want to select whichever document inside this um array that has the same user ID as this, we've, the one that we've just taken in. So we want to say the user, the uh, ID field, actually, since we're doing find by ID, we can just give the ID we want. And we can get the ID from request.body.id. So we've taken in this ID here, and then what this will do is it'll select the document that has that ID. Next thing we want to do is set a um, object with the desired properties that we want to update it to. And if you look at this, um, operator in uh, MongoDB called push. What this does is we can use this to add um, an item to an array and we want to add an item to the log array which has our exercise sessions. So in here just put dollar sign and then push like this and inside this push I'm just going to double check this. Um, yeah we give an object and the key for the object is the field, the uh, the name of the array that we want to push to, which in this case is called a log. And don't worry if it doesn't exist, it will create it for us. And the value is what we want to push to it. And we want to push this new, um, this new session right here that we just created. So we want to push the new session to that user's log array. Just going to double check that, yeah. Um, the next thing, the next argument is an options object, and this options object, if we look at the um, find by ID and update, um, it might take me a while to find this again. Um, I think it's in the model, and then if you go to find by ID and update, um, we want to set this new option to true because by default it'll return the old document before it was updated, and we want to return it to the the new user to doc the new document to the user with our updated fields. So we want to set this new property to true here. So we want to say new and then true. The final argument is the callback function, and this will take in an error. And since we have this new set to true, the data is going to be the updated user. So we have the updated user right here. Okay, so when we add um, when we add a new entry to this, so let's do a football, and I'm just going to create a new user here because the other one wasn't working for some reason. So if I copy this and I paste it to here and then click submit, but we can see that these are the fields that we get returned. So this is what we need to set. So 
let's create a response object in here. So I'm going to say let response object. And I'm going to set this to an empty object for now. And let's think about the fields that we want to set. So we want to set the ID fields. So let's say response object. And we want to set the ID field. And what we can do is just, since the updated user gets returned, we can just say updated user dot ID like this. So we've set the ID field. Next thing we need to do is set the username field. So we're going to say response object. And um, the field here is username. And we want to set this to the updated user's username field. By the way, we could have just returned the ID from the request body as well. Um, then we want to set the date. And so if we go to response object date, and you might notice that the date here is in a UTC form, despite it being taken in as an ISO form. And if I just show you something really quick, so if we go to um, the free code camp um, source code, and then we click on um, API microservices projects, and then the uh, exercise tracker, the way that it tests this is um, it checks that the date is equal to this in this, uh, it, it basically checks it in the UTC form. So it wants to make sure it'll add it something like this and it will check that the date is in this format right here. So what we wanna do here is, and I'm gonna double check this. Yeah, we want to um, set the date field to a new date. And once again, we can provide the ISO string. So we can say new, ex uh, new session dot date. So this um, date f that we took in in the um, month, month, year, year, month, month, sorry, year, year, month, month, uh, date, date format is an ISO string. So we can create a new date from that. And what we can do is we can say to UTC string. And this method will convert it into this uh, UTC format right here. And this also has a time at the end. So what we want to do is actually we can change this completely. We can just use the to date string method. And um, if I show you that, so if we scroll down to here and we look at to date string, what it does is it returns a date portion. So you can see that we get it in the um, in this format right here. So it's a UTC format without the time. So we can just set this to call the to date string method to convert it back. So once again, we create a new date object from the date in ISO format. And then we call the to date string method to get it back into UTC format um, so that it gets marked. Um, then we want to set the description field. So, and the description field is fine to just return the um, new sessions description. Again, um, you can also return a description field from the request body. And finally, we also want to set the uh, duration field. And this has to be returned as a number and not a string. So we want to make sure that we um, take this from the new session since we passed it into an integer there. Like this. Okay, so we have all of that now. Final thing to do is send this off as a JSON. So response.json, and we want to send back the uh, response object. So that was a lot of code. So um, let's test if it works first before I try and explain it. So let's uh, copy this. Um, let's copy uh, Diana's user ID. And if we go back here, and when, then we paste that in here. And let's say swimming, and um, we have a duration and a date in, and then we click submit. Hopefully, no, that did not work. Okay, so I just figured it out. It's because I put ID here, but in the request body, it's actually taken in um, as user ID. So all I have to do here is change this ID to user ID. And if I save this now, and I change this back to ID, um, that took me a long time to figure out actually. So if we go back here and then submit this, yeah, we can see that we have the uh, confirmation that's been returned. And if I add another activity here, like, um, I don't know, yoga, and I submit that, we can see that that gets returned. 
And if we go into our database here and then hit refresh, um, and we go down to Diana, we can see that in the array, we have these two objects with the two activities that we saved. So yeah, that should be everything. And I'm, I'm gonna explain this again really quickly. So what this does is it creates a new session object using the description, duration, and the date fields from our form right here, the body parser provided for us. If there's no date, it creates a current new, um, new date with the current date and time, converts it into an ISO string in this format right here, and it then substrings it so we get rid of the time. Then what it does is it runs the find by ID and update, and it selects the document with the user ID field that we also took in from here. And it pushes to the log array, the new session um, document that we just created. It sets a new equals true property, which means in the callback function, it gets the updated record back instead of the old record. And if there wasn't an error, it creates a new response object, sets the ID to the ID, username to the username. For the date, what it does is it uses the ISO string date field to create a new date object, and then runs the to date string method to turn it back into the uh, UTC format like this. Then it sets the description and duration from this new session. Um, it makes sure that it takes it from the new session for the duration rather than um, from the body since it has to be an integer. And finally, it res uh, JSONs that response back and it adds it to our database. So if I go ahead and submit that now, we can see that um, test four is now passing. It was quite a long way to do it. Um, again, if you have any questions or something, just put, put a comment in and I'll explain it. But this is the way I found it to work the best. So that, yeah, that's test four. So let's look at test five now. And what it says is that I can retrieve a full exercise log of any user by running the root slash API slash exercise slash log with a parameter of user ID. And this is actually worded wrong here. It's not actually a parameter, it's actually a query. So the way we would do that is, let's copy this user ID right here. And what we would do is slash API, slash exercise, and then we would put log here. And this is a query again, not a parameter like they said. And we wanna say user ID equals, then put the user ID in here. And as you can see, we get um, the ID of the user, the username, the count, which is the number of exercises in the log, and then the log with all the exercise items inside it. So that's what we need to return here. So the first thing to do is set up a root, um, a get root for this. So we go down here, um, we want to say app.get and then put the root in. So slash API slash exercise slash log. And we want to give a middleware function here that takes in a request and a response. And um, for now, I'm just going to JSON an empty object back. And what we're just gonna do here is do console.log request.query. If I save that. So if I go into here and then I copy this ID right here and I click um, put in slash um, API slash exercise slash log. And then I put a query string with a question mark, put user ID equals and then put this ID in. We get the empty object back, that's fine. But if we look at the log here, we can see inside the query object, this user ID right here has been captured and it's been stored in a field called user ID that we can now access. So what we want to do is um, return basically the document from that with all our information. So let's do um, user.findById and the first argument is the ID, which we said was in request.query and it's in this user ID field right here. The second argument is a callback function of what to do with the results. So we have the error and result. And if I just do that now, and I'll say if there was no error, so if we found it okay, um, what I'm gonna do is create a response object. And I'm just gonna set this to the result. So the result is an object that represents our document. And I'm gonna set the response object to the result. Then what I'm gonna do is say response object, and I'm gonna set the count field 
And what I'm going to set that to is the result dot uh, log, which is the log array dot length. So that's the number of items in that array. Um, and then finally, oops, uh, what we can do is we can simply just JSON that back. So we can say response dot JSON, and then we can send the response object back. So if I save that now, hopefully um, what I can do here is if I put this root in right here and then refresh it, we can see that um, we have the ID field with the ID username, and then we have this log array, and then we have um, these items right here. So we have the swimming activity and then the yoga activity. So that's essentially, we can put in any user's ID here and it will re return that. So again, what this does is it finds the user by the user's ID, and then it runs a callback function. And if there was no error, what it does is sets the response object to this result. Then it sets the count field of that to the length of the result log, and then it uh, JSON that back. And that should be everything here, really. So what we can do now is just copy this um, URL paste it into here and then click submit. And we can see that test five now passes. So let's look at completing the final test now. And what it says is that we can filter the log by providing some queries such as from, to, and limit. And the from, the to are ISO dates that we can use to make sure our date fits between a certain period of time. And the limit is an integer which specifies a number of results we want to return. So we want to do this um, after we've assigned the result to the response object and before we JSON it back. So the first thing we want to do is say if request.query.limit. And this will execute if there is a limit. So if I put something like and limit, we can see here that we have right now um, four items right here. So if I put something like limit equals two, this means the request.query.limit exists. So if that exists, what we want to do is on the response object, on the response objects log, which is the array, we want to set this to response object dot log, and we want to call the array slice method. And the array slice method, basically you set a start and ending index, and the ending index is not included. And it basically cuts down the array to just have those items in it. And we can put zero and then put request dot query dot limit here. So what this does is if we say the limit is two, it'll show the indexes from zero up to two. So that's index zero and one. So we get back two items. So if I save that now, and I refresh this with the limit applied here. Um, uh, one second. Oh, I forgot to call the slice method here. So if I save that again and refresh it, we can see that we just have the two items now in our log array. So we can now limit our results using this limit query right here. So then we have the from and to query. So from would be something like, let's go back here. And then let's say we want to um, select all the dates from June onwards. So we can say something like and from equals and 2020-06-01 like this. So we'll give an ISO date here. And what it will do is we'll get rid of this May right here. So if I press enter right now, it doesn't do anything. So we need to set up some additional filtering here. So what we want to do is we can say if request dot query dot from or so if so if if there's a from query or request dot query dot to so if there's a to query then we want to do something else inside it before we return it and um what I'm going to do first is just create two dates here and I'm just going to say let from date equals new date zero. And these are going to be the defaults for our filters. So we want the default from to be um, a date with a Unix timestamp of zero or the 1st of January 1970. And this is the lowest date that we can get. Then I'm going to create a two date here. And what I'm going to do is set that to a new date. And I'm not going to put anything inside it. And this will create a new date object with the current date and time, which is the maximum that we want our filter to be because we don't want to go into the future or something. Then what I'm going to do is say if request.query.fromdate, 
sorry, if request.query.from. So if the, if there's a from query like this, what we want to do is set the from date to a new date. And since this is an ISO string right here, we can just provide it to the date constructor. So we can say request.query.from. And what this will do is it'll create a new date object from this ISO string that we give in our query, and it will reassign from date to that. So we have updated our from filter. We want to do the same thing for the to date. So we want to say if request.query two. So if there's a two field specified, we want to um, reassign the to date field to a new date object. And once again, we can give the um, ISO string that we took in. So it's request.query.2. So what this does is it reassigns its from and to date to the ones we want if they're specified right here. Otherwise, it sets them to their defaults, which is the maximum range we can have. Now, to be able to compare dates, we need to um, use Unix timestamps to do this. And remember, to convert the dates into Unix timestamps, uh, what we can do is say, we can give a date object and we can say dot get time. And this returns a numerical timestamp, which we can use for comparison. So what I'm going to do here is just set the um, from and to dates to the um, uh, there respective timestamps. So we can use these Unix timestamps to compare them. Um, so, so now we've established the correct from and to date to filter our um, items between. What we need to do now is say request object dot log equals and then request object dot log. And we want to call the array filter method on this. And this filter method um, takes in, sorry, this should be a response object. Um, and this one. And what this filter method does is, is gives you give it a function that takes in one of the items from the array. And the array consists of, um, I guess, exercise sessions. So I'm just going to call this session. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a Unix timestamp um, from that session's date field right here. So we can say uh, session let um, session date equals, and then we want to do a new date. And since we have the date stored in a field called um, date in each of the session items, and it's, a, it's an ISO string, we can give the um, date right here. So we can say session dot date and then we can call the dot get time method to convert this into a unix timestamp so what it does is it, it extracts this iso string date from each of the sessions it creates a new date object with it and then calls the get time to return it as a numerical unix timestamp which we can compare and these um, functions that we give to filter um, they'll return a boolean and for all the ones all the sessions where the boolean applied to be true, it'll get put into the new array and it removes all the other ones or it filters it out. And then what this will do is it'll reassign it back into this log. So we want to make sure that this session date is greater than or equal to the from date. And we want to also make sure the session date is less than or equal to the to date. And then all the sessions that pass this filter get put into this new array and then it gets reassigned to this log. And that's all done if there was a from or to query. So if I save that now and I refresh this, um, we can see that the May result has now been taken out and we just have from June onwards. And if I put something else in, so if I put and two equals and then I put 2020, dash um, 07 dash 01. So it's from June, the 1st of June to the 1st of July. You can see that the July date has been taken out as well. And then if I put um, here and limit equals uh, 1, we can see that we just get, oh, that's odd. Um, Oh, I should probably move this limit. Actually, that's a good thing I called that. You want to move the limit to after the filtering has took place, um, just to make sure the date filters are applied first before we limit it, because otherwise it's going to run into errors. So if I save that and then put um, and limit equals one, yeah, we can see that we've filtered our result down to just one exercise session 
from June. So we can we basically added these filters here and we can use them to filter down our results. So once again, what this does is it um it finds that user by ID and if there was no error, it assigns the result or the matching document as an object to this response object. If there's a from or to query, it creates some basic filters. So it sets the from date to the lowest date we can have. It sets the to date to the most recent date we can have, which is the current date. Um, if either the from or the to query exists, what it does is it reassigns them to be um, the dates from those ISO strings. Then it calls the get time method on both of them to convert them into Unix timestamps that we can compare. Then we run the filter method on the response object, and this takes in um, one of the items from the array, which is a session, and we generate a session date from it by calling the new date with this um, ISO string in the date field. And then we call the get time method to convert that into a Unix timestamp, which we can then use for comparison with this from date and to date. And then it has a Boolean function here that returns true if the session date is after the from date and it's before the to date, which we can use with the Unix times to compare. And all the sessions that pass that get put into a new array and then this new array gets assigned to this response object right here. And finally, if there was a limit, we just slice the array so that it only shows the number of items in that limit. So if I save that now, and um, if we just run this, uh, we can see hopefully yep yeah, that it has passed all the tests and we have a fully functional um, exercise tracker built right here um, again this was quite long so if you need me to explain anything just put a comment in and I'll try my best so what I'm just gonna do now is go ahead and do some styling to this page to just make it look a little bit better so I'll come I'll go away and do that and come back Okay, so what I've just done now is I've added some CSS styling to change the forms and the colors. And I've got rid of a bunch of crap from this page so that we only have the forms visible. So if I look at it now, we can see that it's a much cleaner interface and we have this create a new user or add um, exercise session. And um, if we can put any name in here and it, it should work, still work completely fine. Um, we can also add um, exercise sessions as well. So the functionality hasn't changed at all. It just looks a little bit nicer now. So yeah, that's the end of the exercise tracker. So we basically created a system where we can create users and then add um, exercise sessions to that users log and then retrieve it as we wish. So yeah, that's the end of uh, project four right here. So you can just go ahead and um, click I've completed and um, you'll see that it passes all the tests and then you can just submit it and move on to exercise five.